Well, good morning, everyone. Looks like we're just getting ourselves started. We've got quite a robust agenda this morning. Brian's got it up on the screen. So we'll just give a few more minutes. How about a few more seconds? And then we'll go ahead and get ourselves started. We are recording, so this will be available for later. And as always, any of the materials that we uh, present or discuss from anyone here at the Office of Public Instruction, we'll be sending that out um, soon after with the recording. And it's also on our website. All right. Well, we've got quite a lot of things going on. Let's go ahead and jump into it. Wendy, we've got some great news, right? Yes, we do. So we wanted to give a big shout out to all of the school districts and really the clerks, superintendents, and the entire staff that helped this last two weeks do the data reporting for uh, the ESSER grant that's due. So we have a third year of this reporting that's going on, and we've had just a tremendous amount of support from the districts in providing that data on a timely basis. So we wanted to first start off with just saying thank you so much for doing that. It significantly helped us um, meet our goals. We'll be submitting later on this month and um, just really appreciate all the support that everybody gave us. We're now gonna jump right into just where those funds are. So just as a status review, we do have um, the trustee documents that are going out every month to school districts and it is to the trustees directly saying, this is what you have left or what you've been allocated for the ESSER one, two, and three. And then we also have at the district level, as Brian has brought up here, a report that's again monthly that shows you per district. And so if Brian, if you go to the second page there, you can see that for example, under elder, you can just walk across and say, what is what has been allocated and then what actually is still left to remaining to be spent. And it's a good overview you can also go into e-grants from the public side and view it more detail if you wish, but all of this information is transparently available to the public and, pro and provided on a regular basis, monthly basis, to the districts themselves. Um, in addition to this, we have the same kind of view for the EANS, for the non-public school expenditure and allocation side, and we will be starting those data collections uh, in the next couple of weeks as well. So again, thank you to everybody for helping with that data collection. We really appreciate it. And um, if there are any questions, feel free to go ahead and reach out to our team to answer those for you. Thank you, Wendy. Just want to give a, a big shout out. Give a give a couple numbers. Um, of our 400 districts, we um, have to submit this by May 4th, I do believe is the deadline. And of course, we're going to be uh, doing this prior to that deadline. But Wendy, give a few numbers of the successfulness of our districts. So we currently only have 13 who haven't submitted and those 13 have already touched bases with us. So we've got a couple of issues that we're trying to work through. So that's a tremendous amount of work that school districts have done. Um, and many of them had two files. So we had 97 who had to submit two files because their districts are broken mm -hmm. apart into two entities. And of the 97, only two had challenges that weren't able to be so far satisfied by the Friday deadline. Mm -hmm. And so again, it's a huge number that they've um, pulled together and been able to submit. Yep, thank you for that. I think that right there shows at the end of a school year and added on top of it with the ESSER funding that our school districts are being very accountable. So extremely pleased for this. And Wendy, big shout out to you and your team as well with that relationship building. So any questions anyone might have of Wendy? Thank you. Thanks, Wendy. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. Perfect. Let's go with Cedar. Cedar is our assessment director, and we've got a lot of things that are occurring within this realm. Good morning, Cedar. Good morning. Yes. Um, thank you for having me today. I'm really excited to share what is going on um, 
with assessment, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Um, so we are in the midst of um, our busiest time of year. We are talking about our, um, we're in the midst of all of our testing windows, um, aside from our WIDA that already closed. Um, so assessment team members have been spending much of our time um, working on monitoring completion rates, um, or on site observations, uh, and really helping educators um, prepare for and administer our testing. So we're excited about that. Um, today, I'm going to share a little bit about um, our testing windows and which windows are open and where we are in those, uh, give an overview of our completion rates, which we are tracking very diligently, um, and then just share with you our plan for our targeted and our general outreach. Um, so out of our six assessment windows for the state of Montana, we're currently in five. Uh, we're a little over halfway through for our general assessment, so our smarter, bal smarter balanced and then our Montana science assessment. Um, and then ACT, we just got through our halfway point at the end of last week. Um, our two alternate tests, our MSA and our, M our AMSA and our MSAA, those are wrapping up in about two weeks. So we're really diligently making sure that we are tracking our completion numbers for those and giving schools the support they need to administer those. So we are excited that we are getting towards the middle and end of those windows. Uh, one of the new features that we have on our assessment Montcast webpage of the OPI website is we have a hyperlink to our up-to-date completion rates. So if you go through this uh, link, you can see our daily completion rates, and those are posted pretty much every morning unless our field, uh, unless we're out in the field site monitoring. So if you go through those, you can see where we are with our all of our assessments. So I'm going to share with you some of our completion rates. So these are as of yesterday, and these are the same um, visuals that we use with on our website as well. Um, so as of yesterday, about 20% of our districts have started our Smarter Balanced General Assessment. So we have two math components for that, then an ELA component. Um, and those are general assessments for grades three through eight. And then about 30% of di districts have started our Montana Science Assessment, and that's in grade three and eight. Um, here are those two um, alternate tests that we are really making sure that we are focused on um, monitoring and getting outreach to the schools that need. Um, so these are closing, like I said, on May 28th. So we have about two weeks left in our window. Uh, completion rates for both of these has dramast dramatically increased last week, so we're really excited for that. Um, about 41% of eligible students have completed the AMSA in grades 3, 8, and 11, and about half of our eligible students have completed um, our MSAA in grades 3, 8, and 11, or 3 through 8 and 11 as well. So we are really excited to see such high numbers for those, and we will continue to track and outreach for those numbers because we know that getting that completion rate to at least 95% is really important. So we're gonna support our districts any way possible for that. Um, here's our ACT with writing. Um, so since ACT with writing moved to our online format, it's really easy for us to track our data, not just for who has completed the ACT with writing online, but also how many students are getting ready to go. So um, as of last Friday, we have about 7,500 students that have completed the online ACT, which is wonderful. And then that ready is a number that is loaded in the system and that we'll test within this next week because this next week is at end of uh, our second window for that. So really great completion. And we know that third window is primarily the time where we get those makeup tests. So we're ready to see those last two numbers um, come through on window three. Um, just a few updates of what we have going on in a few of our initiatives. So this year, the assessment team is really focusing on consistent outreach to support schools through our testing windows. So every other week, um, each system or each district system test coordinator receives an email with general state completion rates and just a reminder when each assessment closes. And then every week, we pull a list of schools who are showing a potential danger of not completing the assessment at that 95% completion rate that we're really looking for. And we send a targeted outreach email to the school superintendent, building level administrator, and the SDC to both notify them of their progress and then offer support in any troubleshooting that they may need to get through the end of their testing. Um, we're also really closely monitoring our completion rates of students with IEPs that take our general assessment because we know that's a really important population that we want to support as well with their accommodations. 
Um, and with that, uh, I thank you for the time and space for giving you some updates about assessments. Like I said, it's a really exciting time of the year for us, and we're really looking forward to the end of our windows and continuing our support with our districts. Thank you. Any questions for Cedar at this point? Just want to also share a thank you, you know, to the team as well. Cedar, thank you for this and the leadership, but also the spot on data that is daily data on completion rates. But if we can have a better completion rate, think about this, then we have a general view of success within um, our schools. And more importantly, um, wanting to share that the federal government requires a 95% completion rate. So we want to make sure that all of our students, whether they are in any ability or all abilities, that there is the opportunity for them to have success with this. Great job, Cedar. Thank you. Next one is just linked along with this as well. And this has to do with our field test waiver. And Dr. Mergel, I believe you're on. Thank you, Superintendent. Um, can you give me the permission to share my screen? Yep. Thank you so much, Superintendent. So we are um, un right now have put out for a waiver and we are seeking public comment and have provided public notice for a field text flexibility waiver. Um, and so what it is, is it is a one-year waiver that states can seek when they're changing their assessment assessment systems so that students are not having to double test um, and that we can get some flexibility around that. So this has been in place for a while and we are currently looking at changing our system from the summative assessment to a through course assessment. And during that process, we really wanna ensure that our students are not double testing. So the purpose of this waiver at this point in time is to really support our MAST pilot program, which Sam will describe here in a few minutes and bring you up to date on where we're at with that. But it also eliminates that burden on our students to be testing both through the MAST and with the SBAC at the end of the year. And then it would give us some flexibility around the accountability system as we're rolling out this new test, because those test scores are used to determine which school needs the need the most support. So who this would apply to is this flexibility would only be for the districts that are participating in the MAST pilot program during the 23-24 school year. It would not apply to the schools who are uh, not participating in the MAST. Um, that would require our MAST pilot schools to still assess the other assessments outside third through eighth grade math and ELA, including the ones that Cedar just spoke about, the science assessments, the alternative assessments, um, and English language proficiency assessments. And then of course, in our high school, MAST is not quite there yet. Um, and then uh, they would still be required, our mass pilot schools, to maintain their accountability designation and report that. We'd still have to put out on the report card the percentage of students that were being assessed or not assessed. So when you talk about that 95% mark, Superintendent, that would mean that our schools would need to get that 95% participation in the MAST pilot as well. Um, and then we would have to report that out um, at the end of the year. Again, the assessments um, for schools not participating in the district, participating in the MAST would continue with the Smarter Balance um, in the spring of 2024, and all of the accountability provisions and reporting would not change for the schools that are not participating in the pilot. I think it's important to note that this flexibility waiver is not only for the assessment, but it is for the accountability. It would allow schools to maintain uh, the school designation that they get in the fall of 2023 um, as comprehensive or targeted. And that would be based upon the data that we're collecting right now in the spring of 2023. Um, and that's actually at a really good point of the three-year cycle, which we use for our comprehensive schools. 
Um, so I would say that, you know, what's really important is that in the long term plan for assessment, uh, we are really working to ensure that this mass pilot test is fully operational for third through eighth grade for ELA and math for all of our schools starting in the year of 2024, 2025. And so we will be moving towards that new system, which really is much more innovative, much more timely, really aligns with what students are learning at that at that moment in time, at, rather than an end of year summative assessment that comes when um, it's no longer relevant and teachers and parents can't use that information to support student learning. So what I would say around the timeline, we opened up this public comment on the 30th of March. We will close public comment on the 28th of April. Uh, we are hosting three webinars to discuss this. We've already hosted the first one. Our next one is tomorrow from four to five, and then we'll have one the following week, April 25th to four to five. We have a survey out. Uh, you can also go online to read the flexibility waiver in more detail around the particular statutes that we're seeking to waive in an assessment, accountability, and reporting. And we really encourage you to complete this survey that takes maybe five minutes uh, around this testing waiver. Um, and I will drop that link for you into our chat here in just a minute. You can also send written comment about this waiver to our ESSA input box at ESSA input at mt.gov. We, of course, have lots of information on our website under the MAST pilot program. So you can go there to that site as well and get tons of information. What I close with you guys is that this is really an exciting time in assessment in Montana. We're really innovating and we're really pushing the envelope. I cannot tell you how many times a day we get emails or inquiries from out of state saying, hey, let us know how this goes because we're really going to want to follow Montana. Um, we are seeing you guys lead in this through your course assessment that has been available and states have not stepped up to the plate to try but also that you guys are pushing on being sure that this assessment is relevant and that we're not asking students and, and teachers to be double testing, that we're really being thoughtful in how we go about innovating and innovating for all the right reasons when we think about assessing student learning. So I'm just super excited to be part of a team who's really pushing to help our students and our educators and our families and our school communities make assessment meaningful and just right. It is due time for that to happen. So superintendent, I turn it back over to you um, so that Sam can maybe just provide a little bit more information about the mask. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Mergel. Any questions you might have of Julie? But we are getting tremendous amount of spotlight right now from the national media, as well as from other national groups that really would like to invest in this area. Um, so we are, we're leading the way. The other aspect of this is because of the math standards being opened, world languages, as well as opening reading shortly, it's a true connection because it's about the teaching and empowering the teacher, as well as empowering the learner in understanding their success. So it's a great model. We're, we're very tickled that we do have great partners in this and uh, a great team here at the OPI. So we'll go ahead and move this over to Sam. Talk to us more about the alternative uh, tests that we've got going on called the MAST. Absolutely. I'm just gonna share my screen and share a little update um, since last month. So window four, our last window of the year, just opened on Monday, um, and we've give, we've added a one-week extension onto that window to allow for more flexibility for schools. So that's going to run until May 5th. Um, I included a little bit of information about our districts and schools testing. We still have 33 districts, and those are how our schools are broken out between urban, suburban, and rural. Um, a big emphasis right now is how we're preparing for year two and the 
definitely the biggest thing that's going on in the master world is the waiver that Julie shared. So I'm doing a lot of work um, helping get that public comment compiled. And if you have public comment to add, please do. Everything is on the MAS webpage, um, including the links to those webinars and surveys. So be very much appreciated any comment. Um, we are adding grades three, four, six, and eight. So we will have all of our, um, all of the operational grades being tested next year. So they will ha all have a chance to be field tested before we go fully operational. Um, and there will also be an addition of a fifth testlet at the end of the year, which will be a performance task. And I will bring you more information as that becomes available related to that performance task. And we'll also be introducing the first stage of flexibility. And that's just aligning testlets at the district level um, to fit local scope and sequence. So that's really coming down to collection on our end, a lot of research, and then aligning it so that the districts don't have to do that themselves this year or this coming year. So our top priorities, of course, the field testing flexibility waiver, inviting districts to participate in year two, a huge part of that will be obtaining that waiver. Um, we are putting together, or we have put together already some educator cadres. They just met last week and they will be meeting again in June. Um, also at the state level, we are providing um, item review at the state level this coming month or two to prepare for those June cadres. So we will get a chance to review all the items first and then send them to the educator cadres. And then more information, of course, is on the MAPS webpage. You can email me, Crystal Smith, Dr. Mergel, um, with any questions. Thank, Thank you. you, Sam. Thank you so much. Any questions for Sam? Just as a, a high review, we are doing uh, math and reading in fifth and seventh currently with the last Tesla window of a total of four. This coming year, though, we are accelerating from third grade through eighth grade. If you'll remember what Cedar Rose brought up with the ACT, the ACT is done in 11th grade. So we're looking to see what should occur with the ACT since the university system in Montana does not necessarily use it for an entrance examination at this point. So there'll be more information on that secondary test. Should we have third through ninth grade in a longer continuum, or should we continue then with a product if it is indeed the ACT in that secondary? So that is a discussion that we're having here, and we're gonna be doing more with you uh, in the ensuing months. Any questions you might have on assessments? All right, let's go to chapter 55. Do we have Crystal on, Dr. Merkel? Yeah. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Wanna thank you very much with the partnership that we have with the Board of Public Ed. So we are just excited about July 1. That window is gonna be opening where chapter 55 goes live. So Crystal, good morning. Good morning, Superintendent. It is a busy time in accreditation as well. Um, can you see my screen okay? Yes. Okay. So I'm here today to share a few things that we've been working on. Um, number one, it's important to share that I do have a team of two others in accreditation now. Um, so I have two accreditation specialists along with myself. So we have been working um, very long days of preparing our new process for that July 1 um, new uh, implementation of Chapter 55. So today I would like to share um, what our timeline looks like right now. So uh, in May, the Board of Public Ed uh, did decide, uh, will be deciding, I'm sorry, this coming May on the process um, for accreditation. Uh, my team will be bringing that to you, Superintendent, on this Friday. Um, for your review and for your feedback. And from there, we will get that to the board. Um, we have been holding feedback sessions. We've held eight feedback sessions with stakeholders across um, our state. Uh, we do have, uh, I think yesterday was our last one and we had over 20 participants yesterday, which was our highest. And I think collectively 
we, we were well over 50 um, districts, a representative stakeholders, some of you that are on here today um, that have attended those stakeholder um, feedback sessions about our process changing. And we have received great feedback. Uh, we are taking that feedback and working still today um, uh, you know, and, and looking at our system and what that will look like and what, what changes need to take place. Um, in this timeline, it also says um, part of new Chapter 55 rule is the ISAP, the Integrated Strategic Action Plan. So we will be holding uh, sessions at the Summer Institute in June, um, basically work sessions for districts. Well, my team will be there to support this change because it is different um, and helping guide that process. Uh, and we will be doing more than just that work session, but that is an opportunity where districts will already be there. Um, again, as the superintendent said, July 1, will, our new rules will go into place. And part of this, I'm gonna skip ahead a second, I can come back, but is uh, a big shift is that the annual data collection will be um, separated out from accreditation. So in the past, all of the data was collected at one time, and it really kind of just made a big bucket that this is all accreditation data. And most of it actually is not for accreditation purposes. So um, what we're proposing and we'll bring to you superintendent and then to the board is that we are going to separate out that data collection, still having it be held, um, you know, that window September 1 to November 1, um, but then accreditation not being due at that same time, that giving districts more time to input their data for accreditation for them to be able to get those teachers licensed, that, that's my other hand as well, um, and not be, receive a deviation for that. And we're proposing that that accreditation data and that accreditation cycle being due sometime in the spring. Um, so from that, um, as I said, 95% of the collection will be moving to Infinite Campus that'll be housed there. Um, I, we have received feedback, but what if we're, uh, um, you know, don't use infinite campus and it'll be the same way. Um, it'll be used the same way. So if you're a power school and you, you use that, it'll be um, streamlined into the infinite campus. So that is not an issue. Um, schools will still be required to report that information annually. So that will not change. It just will not be for accreditation purposes. I, I believe that the, um, the annual data collection team, um, the AIM team will be holding some um, preparation for this change and you know this upcoming fall to help districts understand what's due, when it's due, where it will live. And I, I believe that that will be coming here you know, um, in the summer so that it is an easy shift, um, but that part of it will not be changing. So accreditation will be able to pull the data that is submitted into our new, uh, our new system. So accreditation will have um, a new system similar to the licensure system while well, hopefully using the same providers so that it, it can talk to each other and um, in work together. So teams will no longer be teams in this upcoming year. Um, and so through that, um, I already mentioned on the stakeholder feedback sessions and where we're taking that feedback. Um, so the annual data collection information will be moved. We are building a new system and are in the um, in the process of that. Getting feedback on that as well as to what you know should be there, and we're incorporating um, a different uh, system of grading in terms of uh, using rubrics instead of check boxes uh, for districts to really understand what they are being evaluated on. Um, and the biggest thing that we're hearing positive feedback on is that it's really so that districts are not having to re, um, duplicate their efforts and import new data. Um, that is huge and so time consuming so that it's a great thing for districts. They'll put it in once, it'll speak to another system where it can go for accreditation and that, that effort will um, hopefully be far less than it has been in the past. Um, so a shift to that, I think this is, these were all within our feedback sessions. We have um, the feedback session presentation will be put onto our webpage, accreditation webpage today. I had to get it um, checked over for, uh, just to make sure it was okay for the webpage. And we do have also um, some of the sessions recorded as well. So those will be there for um, people to hear. Yesterday was our last stakeholder, um, feedback session. Our feedback was due by today at nine so that we can get that work 
put together so we can have it compiled for you, uh, Superintendent, for Friday. Um, but there will be a shift um, for our current measures for the student performance measures, as you can see. And I know time is of essence, I could talk all day for you, but um, basically what we're hearing is that um, districts are really excited for that shift. They're concerned with change um, and we are promising that we will make it as, um, as easy as possible in terms of providing the opportunity for them to provide the feedback to us, but also um, to start to start small, you know, and start implementing little pieces this next year and then build from that so that it is a process. Um, a lot of good changes kind of come, came through with chapter 55 that we wanna be sure that districts are um, understanding the new process and making sure that it is relevant and appropriately done. So I look forward to working with all stakeholders um, and getting that information to you this week. So we will be busy this week making sure everything is done. And um, I, I appreciate and will welcome any input as we continue this process. Um, and I think everyone should have my information, um, but if not, uh, you know how to find me. So I appreciate this time and I'm sure I will be back to continue uh, the process in the future. So thank you. Thank you, Crystal. Any questions for Crystal and her team? I think the biggest takeaway that I can get from this is that transition period to make sure that uh, we do no harm. Uh, the system has been operating under a period of time one way, and to move this so quickly is going to be detrimental. So we're going to be using your feedback and going out, of course, and talking to our customers to make sure that we work with and we don't do things too. So thank you, Crystal, and thank you for your team. And the information will flow out after this meeting for sure. So thank you. Dr. Merkel, let's go ahead and move on to the ESSA addendum. All right, uh, hopefully you can see the screen. I am all about waivers today. So a second waiver that we have put out is for Title I Part A 1003 subgrants. And so just to tell you very quickly, what is a Title I Part A Section 1003 funding? And what is the grant in the first place? And then what are you trying to waive? So Section 1003 provides funding to our schools that have been identified as comprehensive support improvement or targeted as defined under ESSA. And these improvement funding support those needs that schools outline in their school improvement plan. So they get this funding to really help them improve and they utilize that based upon the plan that they set that's aligned to basically reporting and monitoring um, evidence-based practices that align under a definition for ESSA. And so the purpose of this waiver is we're in a really interesting point with our comprehensive schools that have been on a three-year cycle. Due to the pandemic, um, this cycle got interrupted. And so our schools um, did not receive designations and the years of 2021 uh, were not included in that in 21-22 because there was basically a hold. Um, and so they are not actually gonna get to their final year until this year. And so the data that currently is being collected is considered their third year. We'll be assessing that data in the fall of 2024 um, and then really setting for the school year of 24-25, the new three-year cycle. So this waiver is because the funding is only to be for four years. Um, that they're eligible for. And we just want to give them that one extra year, this 23-24 school year, to close that out and have that financial support to, to align with that cycle, if you will, so that we're not saying, yes, you need to continue improve your improvement efforts, but there's no money to go along with it. So we're just trying to get those things into alignment 
as we look at the stop, start, restart process of the federal accountability system. So this is the purpose of this waiver, is to seek one more year eligibility for those comprehensive schools and targeted schools to have that money for one more year. Um, we opened up public comment on the 16th. We extended this window to the 19th of April because we did want to have an opportunity to speak with our education advocates. We held some webinars and we are taking any written comment that you might have about this particular waiver at our ESSA input at mt.gov so we can collect all of those comments close out those comments tomorrow and uh, submit our waiver to the department. That is all that I have for you, Superintendent, on this waiver. I am certainly available for any questions. Thank you. Any questions for Julie? And just as uh, understanding, ESSA replaced No Child Left Behind. And because of the challenges with the pandemic, we want to make sure that Montana schools and their ability to succeed are being recognized and that's why we're asking for a year extension with this one. All right, let's go to our last one, uh, data modernization. We have our CIO, Mr. Sinrud. Good morning, everyone, and Superintendent. How are you guys today? Hope everything's going well for a Tuesday morning. And I wanted to, actually, it's Wednesday, I'm sorry. No, it is Tuesday. Anyways, um, if I could share my screen, that would be great. I just have a few quick updates. There we go. All right. Our modernization project. So we have some great news. Uh, we got the RFP out uh, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, questions had come in last week from potential vendors that are going to respond. And then the highlighted blue area are the where we're at right now. Uh, the response to those questions is uh, due on Thursday. Actually, we're ahead of the game and got our responses back to DOA yesterday. Uh, they have some uh, follow-up on a couple of questions that they need to answer as well. And then we can start going through the review process. The RFPs are due next week, a uh, pretty short timeline, but we're excited to get everything in and start reviewing and going through and trying to find a potential vendor for really the big lift of everything modernization here. Uh, one of the responsibilities that they're going to have is tying in our TMT system and the accreditation system, uh, along with our single sign-on. Um, but probably the most important and uh, exciting part of this is we are um, bent on eliminating as much data duplication as we can for the field, make things as much uh, streamlined and as simple and easy as possible to get that data from the schools and districts up to us. So with that, I won't bore you with all the date and timeline details, but we're looking at the end of May to get things really kicked off after contract uh, is signed and going. So we are thrilled to death to be at this stage of the game. So with that, uh, Superintendent, any questions? Any questions for Chris? Great. Well, thank you very okay. much, Chris. It is definitely a project and a process that we're working on. I see Julie has dropped in the chat uh, the survey for the first waiver uh, <laughs> regarding our alternative testing. Uh, information will flow out to you as well. I want to thank you very much for participating. Um, and we are blessed. We are totally blessed. We have very few days left of this school year, and we're very pleased and proud to say that our school districts are putting our students first. So we want to thank everybody there, and we're looking forward to graduation celebrations. With that, everyone, please stay well. Thank you. Blessings.